What's going on? We back. It's the Box Clinton Morris, your boy CJ Goodfellow. Y'all know what it is. We on the boxing groove and ain't no stopping us now. And yes, I believe that T Jeff Horn is a step up fight for Terrence Crawford for many reasons. And um, I just don't pull this shit out of my ass. This is, you know, factual shit that I'm about to give you guys. Um, I'm not saying that Jeff Horn is going to stop Terrence Crawford or beat him down or put him in any real danger, but I think it's competitive. And if you look what Horn is bringing to the table, I believe it's something that, you know, Terrence Crawford hasn't dealt with on a professional level, being with top rank. Um, for one, Jeff Horn is one of the most big, <laughs> physically big, you know, especially on fight night, welterweights. Um, he's very physical. He can punch. He's awkward. He used the funky angles, the funky head movement, and he's nasty. He's dirty. Um, hit you on the hip, you know, head butt you. He's a dirty inside classic pressure fighter with some unorthodox properties. Crawford hasn't seen that. You know, you could say Beltron was a pressure fighter, and, you know, Terrence Crawford was very, very wary of Beltron for some reason in that fight. He never went in for the kill. I mean, with Felix Diaz, he was just too small and couldn't punch hard enough. He was trying to be physical and push Crawford and bully Crawford. He was just too small. Lundy tried it. He was too small. Delorme was too chinny. Um, you know, Victor Postal was, was gun shy. He was scared. He knew he couldn't take the punch. And Crawford was too, uh, you know, too much skill, skill for him, too quick, too strong for him. I mean, you know, in Dongo, we know the book on him. So there's no fighter that Crawford has faced. <laughs> that's his, that's bringing what Jeff Horn is bringing to the table. A lot of people are not going to agree with me, but listen to the facts. You know, who punching harder than Jeff Horn and that's physically big that Crawford has fought? Who's the biggest puncher Crawford fought? You know, who, um, you know, Victor Postal was the bigger puncher. I can remember him fighting since being with top rank. I think, you know, Jeff Horn may be a bigger puncher than Victor Postal at 147. Um... What guy has, has, has you know, who, who's, who's a pressure fighter that, that's very strong and can stay on Crawford and, and, and kind of close the distance and, and hit him on the hip, hit him to the body, head butt him and, and cut a eye over, you know, cut a, put a cut over his eye and be dirty with him and cause some adversity. Nobody has done that to Crawford yet. Crawford has skipped over some of the checklists, <coughs> excuse me, that you need to see and see if the guy's legit. Because if it's raw, and his, his, his developed talent, um, you know, he, he's the entire package, don't get me wrong. But this is where the this is where the real campaign for Pound for Pound number one starts. I've told anybody that, listen, my Pound for Pound number one is vacant. It just starts off at one with Crawford and goes back down. Any of these guys in the top ten Pound for Pound, in my opinion, you know, I don't see these guys as, as you know, as big fighters or or this pound for pound great fighters. Like I've mentioned on many occasions, boxing is in uh, transition mode from the Manny Pacquiao Floyd Mayweather era. You dig? They, it is. And it's looking for somebody to become the face of boxing. Canelo could have did that with a win over Triple G or execute a rematch win over Triple G. He got popped for steroids, you know, or or, or whatever. Performance and had some drugs. Let me say that right. Clinton your ball. And several prominent boxers like Andre Barter and Terrence Crawford Say they know what it is and believe he was dirty and did it, you know. And it, it does add up to get off topic for a minute because a guy that has stamina issues versus Golovkin in the first fight and passed every body test he's took for 12 straight fights, whatever it may be, all of a sudden he's tested positive for a for substance that can give you better stamina, better energy, and he's promising a knockout now. There's no coincidence, you know, or coincidence, however you want to say it, like Quincy Dink. <laughs> Kind of a little childish, but it's not like it. But, but yeah, a lot of fighters realize that. But like I said, Jeff Horn is going to be a guy that's going to test Crawford. He's going to make Crawford work every minute of the round. He's going to be a pest. And Crawford is going to have to, you know, physically, you know, make this dude quit or knock him out or, or put him down. But he's going to get back up and keep coming. So the white tile may be in full effect. But don't rule out the fact that Jeff Horn will cause some, uh, controver will cause some uh, adversity that we haven't seen Terrence Crawford in. Don't be surprised if Jeff Horn drops Terrence Crawford. I wouldn't be surprised in any of these scenarios because I think people are underselling what Jeff Horn brings to the table. He's very, very awkward, you know, and he's a pressure fighter that that's so funky and awkward with his feet and his angles and his his head movement and coming in with his head and his body attack. This is something that Crawford hasn't dealt with in the public's eye. So this is something they preparing for in the gym. Do I expect Crawford to pass his test with flying colors? Yeah, but it's going it's going to be some. Some some highs and some lows, some hills, some valleys, you know, some mountains, some peaks. It's going to be that in this fight. You know, don't be surprised if you see Crawford bleeding out the mouth, bleeding out the eye. You know, don't be surprised if you see Jeff Horn in, in a bloody mess. That's what it's supposed to be. This is supposed to be Crawford's introduction to 147, his crash course. Like I said, everybody that he's fought before 
he enjoyed a large advantage and a, a lot multiple large advantages in different compartments. This is the one fight where he might not have a large advantage in the physical strength, in the power, and the dirtiness, the grab, the, the dirtiness that Jeff Horn is going to bring to the ring. Um, you know, this is this is a, a fighter that we haven't seen him face on this level, this style. He hasn't fought a pressure fighter that's going to give it, you know, that's going to take it and give it back to him. And we're going to see if Crawford can put it back on him and put him out. But I expect Crawford to do his thing, but I, I expect Jeff Horn to open some eyes. I'm telling you guys, Jeff Horn is going to open some eyes in this fight. Even though if he go out in the third or fourth round, he's going to expose some chinks in Crawford's armor, in my opinion. But it won't be like exposed, big exposure, or big, large holes. It'll be, okay, Jeff Horn did better than we expect, so people are going to exaggerate what he did. Trust me, that's what's going to happen if Horn hangs around long enough. But the pedigree of fighter will show up. The experience of Terrence Crawford will show up. He will show you guys how tough he is and how can he overcome adversity. And then we get to talk about, you know, the big fights. We want to see Thurman Crawford, you know, Crawford, Earl Spence, Crawford, Sean Porter, Crawford, Danny Garcia. You know, we're going to talk about those big boy fights and potentially Crawford and Jesse Vargas in the top rank reunion. But that's why I stand on this. Y'all know what it is. Shout out to the LDBC. We gone.